ACU football is home for Halloween and a scary good opponent. I'm Shani Morosky. And I'm Grant Boone. Maybe a few tricks for McNeese State. Hopefully a few treats for Wildcat fans. We'll get you ready for ACU football right now on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome to week nine of the Ken Column Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. I'm Grant Boone, joined by senior journalism major Sharon Imorowski and the head football coach at Abilene Christian University, Ken Columns. It's a Halloween edition of the Ken Column Show, and Coach, I don't know how many people at Shotwell Stadium this afternoon will come in costume, but I do know that the guys from Louisiana dressed like cowboys have frightened a whole lot of teams this season. How spooky is this bunch from Lake Charles. Well, they are very spooky. And when you watch them on defense, they will be one of the best defenses that we've seen in Shotwell Stadium, period. So uh, they've got guys that can run and hit, and they, they scare the quarterback quite a bit. But you know what? There are going to be some Wildcats that show up, too. So uh, I think we'll, uh, I think, I think it'll be a good match. Coach, last week the game got postponed until Sunday because of the rain. How does that affect your daily schedule this week? Well, it puts us a day behind because normally on Sunday we're preparing. Uh, we end up, you know, breaking down, evaluating our previous game that we played the day before, and and then on Sunday night you move forward. Well, we didn't get to do any of that. We had to do all that on Monday, so we're a little bit behind and uh, sleep deprived a little bit this week. But you know what? Hey, it's football season. We'll be all right. What a grind this is. Uh, we're in the middle of that nine-game stretch to close out the season and uh, in, in the Southland Conference, and, and it is a grind. We'll see how ACU does against McNeese State. We'll preview that game a little bit later on, but when we come back, highlights from the game last weekend against Incarnate Word. Glad you're with us here on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Heavy rains and flooding in San Antonio last weekend pushed ACU's game against the University of the Incarnate Word from Saturday to Sunday. With a look back at the highlights, here's Daniel Zapata. The Wildcats travel to San Antonio to take on longtime rival Incarnate Word. The Cardinals came out early with a 21-yard pickup on a third and eight situation to pick up the first down. UIW found the end zone on the one-yard run to go up seven to nothing in the first quarter, capping off a 15-play, 89-yard drive. The Cardinals had the long ball working as quarterback Trent Britton finds Jordan Hicks for a 50-yard gain to move into ACU territory. Towards the end of the half, freshman cornerback Jabari Butler recorded his conference-leading fourth interception of the season and halted the Incarnate Word offense. The Wildcats put together a 17-play, 66-yard drive that ended in a 28-yard field goal by freshman kicker Zach Lair to make it 10-3 Incarnate Word heading into halftime. ACU came out of the gates on a mission to start the second half as the second play of the half results in sophomore running back DeAndre Brown going for 70 yards into the end zone to tie things up at 10. Lair would find the uprights once again on a 32-yard field goal to push ACU ahead 13-10. The Cardinals would respond as running back Junior Sessions goes for 46 yards on the run and Britton finds Cody Edwards to make it first and goal. Britton would connect from four yards out for the touchdown to put UIW up 16-13. Dallas Seeley would find Carl Whitley on the next drive for a 75-yard touchdown to put ACU back on top, 20-16. Yeah. The Wildcats had little answers against the run as Sessions finished the game with 22 carries for 174 yards and a pair of touchdowns. After a field goal and a failed ACU fourth down conversion, UIW drove the ball down the field and found the end zone with just 48 seconds left to go up 25 to 20. The Wildcats would put together one final drive to try to break their three game losing streak, but couldn't get it done as ACU moves to two and five overall and two and four in conference. 
The Wildcats welcome McNeese State this Saturday at home. All right, thanks, Daniel. When it rains, it pours right now for the AC Wildcats. Tough loss to a much improved Incarnate Word team, which is now 4-3 and three on the season. Like we've seen a lot in the last month, Coach, your defense gave up some points early. Your offense struggled to move the ball in the first half. How much of the recent first half woes, as you break down the film, would you attribute to having so many inexperienced guys in unfamiliar spots? And how much is, is it just simply a lack of execution? I think it's a little of both. Uh, if... if if we knew the uh, you know the the for sure equation to that, yeah. Well, yeah, we can we can fix it. But different people are 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 not executing at different times, and it looks you know you end up with a punt, you end up with a three and out, or you end up with a uh, with a couple of first downs and then a punt. So uh, I am not pleased with the way we're playing in the in the first half. I don't think anybody would be, but uh, uh, I'm I'm glad we're playing better in the second half though. So. Uh, we just got to play more consistently, and uh, if we're going to beat good teams, which mm -hmm. uh, the last time we played from start to finish, uh, we had a quality game with Stephen F. Austin. We yeah. won the game, beat a, beat a quality team. Yeah. And uh, so from here on out, that's I mean that's what we've learned. It's what we learned last year. Uh, the fact that we're not doing it is disappointing. Uh, though there there are various reasons wh why we've got we've got a lot of new guys in, in. But but the bottom line is, you got to you got to play well in order to win. One of the guys you did get back from injury this last week was Richard Griffin III, your own version of RG3, a transfer cornerback who really has been dynamic at times this year when he's been healthy. The problem sure. is he hasn't been in there. He wound up forcing a fumble from Trent Britton that thwarted a Cardinals a scoring opportunity. Later, in fact, the very next UIW play on offense, he had a pick from Jabari Butler. Coach, we've seen... Griffin, we've seen Butler, freshman junior Henderson. There are some young playmakers in that secondary. That's got to give you at least a little bit of encouragement for the future, rest of this year and next year. Sure. There, there, when you look closely, there are a lot of encouraging things that are happening. The problem is we're not winning games. Mm. And, and, and so with our woes now, uh, you know, we've, I mean, we've, I've never lost four games in a row in my life, and, and a lot of these guys have it. So it doesn't feel very good right now. We're trying to get this thing right. But what that's going to say for the future is we've got a lot of young guys playing. When we get all of our other guys back, this, we're, we'll, we'll get it back on track. You go into halftime, down 10-3. to three. You get a field goal from Zach Lair, his first career nice. attempt. Yes. He nailed it on the final play of the half. And then the first play... Of the second half, you go 70 yards with DeAndre Brown from the Wildcat. Why does the Wildcat work? To the naked eye, it doesn't look necessarily that exotic. It's it's a direct snap to to a guy, and he runs it. Why does it work when it works? Well, defenses line up to alignments for the most part. When you get set, they line up to 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 the alignment. Then when you motion the quarterback out or shift the quarterback out. Which you did with Dallas. Yes. Really. A, a lot of times that creates, that takes their attention off of DeAndre and what is actually in the box, the meaningful part of it. It's kind of like magic. You know, you create a little diversion and then you do this. But uh, it, we, a lot of times you end up with a really good matchup uh, in the box because people have to cover people. Mm. That's, that's what you learn from day one in football. That's football 101. Don't let anybody line up without somebody over the top of him. So while they're communicating, we got four receivers on this side. Well, the main one's in the backfield, and he's, he's about to get the ball. So uh, sometimes it's an element of surprise. Sometimes it's just, you know what, you get really good matchups uh, when you do that. But, uh, and that was cool to watch, and that, that's, that's Wildcat football. We, yeah. We're used to scoring from a long way out. The, but the, bottom, the bottom line is you can't survive on big plays and turnovers. You, you have to play consistent football. And we, we, we were a big play turnover team on, on, uh, on Sunday, but it, that's not good enough. You've got to sustain some things. You, took the, you, you tied the game at 10 with that play. Then you took the lead 13-10. They get the lead back. And then on the very next play after they take the lead 16-13, you did get a Lynn Grady blocked extra point. You get Dallas Seeley over the top down the near sideline with a pass to Carl Whitley. It goes 75 yards. Another one of those big plays you're talking about. Coach, we know that Seeley has a cannon for an arm, but that was a throw that required a little bit of touch as well. We saw a couple of others. I, I don't see a, a, an overabundance of guys who have both the big arm and the touch. Dallas seems to have both. Well, he has got the, the thing that I've noticed about Dallas from day one is he, he is extremely accurate. Mm -hmm. We saw that in high school. He didn't throw for a ton of yards in high school, but he has the ability to be accurate 
in the pocket, on the move, he can change arm angles, and you know a lot of that you can't teach. And and what the you know the touchdown to Carl was really a design run play for Dallas, mm. and he's he's re, he was kind of a run, he's either going to run it or he's going to throw it. So there there was there were two decisions that he made in the in the matter of about a second and a half. Then he threw a strike on the move. So it was that was a nice play. I mean that's really good. And obviously it's really good when it works because now you got Carl Whitley. Uh, on, on the move, and, and he's he's got some speed. As we wrap up here, Coach, uh, it, it comes down to one drive on on defense for your team. Trent Britton had the ball. You'd been warning us that that Britton, the quarterback from Carnot Ward, can hurt you with his feet and with his arm, and he did in that last drive. Didn't sure, he? and we did not do a good enough job of, of putting pressure on him. When you don't do that, and you and you give guys a lot of time in that pocket, they're going to be able to scan the field, and if they get uncomfortable, or if you get out of your rushing lanes, he's going to run for 10 yards, and that's, that's, uh, that's what happened. And, you know, your hat's off to them. They, yeah. they, they, they played better than we did from start to finish on that day. A day late and just a little bit short, 25 to 20, the final score. When we come back on the Ken Collins Show, we'll take you around the ACU Sports World up at the JMC Network Sports Desk. But as we go to break, take a look at some of the other scores from around the Southland Conference last week, including another win for this week's opponent, McNeese State, as they knocked off Northwestern State 47 to 27. Stay with us here on the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. While several core defensive players graduated last year, Lynn Grady is still here as a steady linebacker for the team. Here's more about his career and what he's learned as a leader this season. We know you, the team as a whole has struggled a little bit these past few weeks. Looking toward the rest of the season, what do you, as part of the defense, what do you guys have to do to help them get away? Uh, we have to tackle and get off the field on third downs. That's the two biggest thing right now that we're struggling with. Uh, you know, versus Carnot Ward, we missed a few tackles that would have got us off the field in the third down. Uh, and the other than that, it's also focus. We have to get our eyes in better places. A lot of us are looking at the quarterback too much. So we get those things fixed. A couple weeks ago, I got to talk to Sam Denmark, who's only a sophomore. Um, how did him stepping up, did that help you? Did it bring the defense together? How was Definitely, you know, it's always good to uh, have somebody like Denmark around. He brings energy. Uh, he's always, he's crazy sometimes, but we love it. And um, Denmark always, he's dependable. Whenever we need a big play, Denmark's usually going to make a big play. Jumping right into it, you saw a lot of guys leave last year. Uh, Angel Lopez, Justin Stewart, Justin Stevens, the list goes on. Did that change your mindset going into the season at all? Uh, it just let me know that, you know, I had to step up knowing that I'm one of the only seniors now and I just got to lead everybody and lead by example mostly. I'm be vocal when I have to be, but mostly just show the other guys how it's supposed to be done because Angel and Stu and them did a really good job of showing us how it's supposed to be done. Grady has 48 tackles so far this season, including six tackles for a loss. Here's Hannah Knoll and Jonathan Rates with a recap of the first tennis matches of the year, as well as other ACU sports. Tennis competed at the ITA USTA Texas Regional Championships at Rice University last Tuesday. Junior Nico Agritelli suffered a first round defeat to come back with three victories claiming the consolation draw title in the championship. Hunter Holman, Sebastian Langdon, and Josh Sheehy also won at least one consolation draw for the Wildcats. Many of the consolation matches in the women's tournament at College Station were canceled because of rain. But sophomores Lucille Potier and Casey Hermsdorf each won their first main draw singles, reaching the round of 32 where they lost the competition. Junior Aaron Walker beat the University of Incarnate Word Sarah Saavedra in the first round of consolations, but was unable to play any further because of rain. Soccer was looking to clinch the number one conference spot last weekend when the team faced Sam Houston State University, but had to settle with a 2-2 tie. Junior Kate Say put the Wildcats on the board in the 70th minute for an assist from Megan Baer and Dylan Owens. Owens then gave the Cats the lead in the 72nd minute with a goal that deflected off a Bearcats defender. Sam Houston stole the lead in the 82nd minute after an intercepted pass was shot past ACU's goalkeeper. The tie moves the Wildcats down to third place in Southland standings. The Wildcats lost a crucial game 2-0 on Tuesday, which knocked them out of contention for the conference champions. Stephen F. Austin was first in conference play with seven wins, no losses, and two ties, and this win solidified their spot. 
The Wildcats are now competing for third place in the conference and will get the chance to improve their record to seven wins, two losses, and two ties. The last game of the 2015 season is scheduled to take place on Friday at Elmer Gray Stadium against the University of Incarnate Word. Volleyball completed its final homestand of the season with a 2-1 record. The Wildcats began the long weekend with a 3-1 victory over New Orleans, ending a two-game losing streak. Sophomore Corinne Grancolis recorded a career-high eight blocks in her first home match of the season. The team pushed its win streak to two when it took care of southeastern Louisiana in straight sets, 3-0. Senior Madison Hoover dug out 19 kill attempts, becoming the on only the second Wildcat to break the 1600 dig mark. In the final game of their homestand, the Wildcats were unable to overcome Nickel State, falling in four sets on senior night and breaking a five-match home winning streak. Senior Jenny Lurch contributed a career-high 24 kills, but as a team, ACU was held to a 120 hitting percentage over the four games. The team returns to action on Halloween against Incarnate Word, beginning a season-ending five-match road trip. The Wildcats currently sit in fifth place in the Southland Conference standings at 6-5. That's all for this week's JMC Network Sportscast. I'm Jonathan Rates. And I'm Hannah Nall. Back to you, Shara. Thanks, Hannah. Stay with us on the Ken Collins Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. Take a look at today's schedule for teams in the Southland Conference. How about in Huntsville, Texas, Sam Houston State hosts ACU's former Lone Star Conference rival, Texas A&M Commerce whose head coach is our old pal Colby Carthel, the former ACU assistant coach. Coach, he's got the Lions rolling. They've won six straight games. They are number one in all of Division II in turnover margin. They've taken the ball away 25 times. They, they might need to take it away a couple of times from the Bearcats if they're oh, going to they upset will. them. There's no doubt, but, but uh, Colby's done a great job yeah. there. and I, I imagine they are fun to watch. He's got some good players. All right, let's talk about today's game here at Shotwell. The McNeese State Cowboys come riding into town high on the horse. Ranked number seventh in the nation, sporting a perfect 7-0 record. They're led by a ferocious defense and a dynamic quarterback in Kansas State transfer, Daniel Sams. Coach for the second time in three weeks. Again, we talked about the schedule maker. You get a top 10 team rolling into Shotwell Stadium. We saw Sam Houston State in person three weeks ago. When you see McNeese on film, are they as good as Sam, maybe even better? I think they are. They're different schematically, but they, they're from top to bottom, They've got athletes that can run all over the place. You look at their defense, uh, they're not as tall as, uh, the, their, their linebackers are not as tall as uh, Sam Houston's, their safeties aren't, but they are, they're all about, they're about 5'11", 6 foot, maybe 6'1", and they can run and hit, and they play with extreme passion. Watching them, I mean, it's enjoyable to watch them play defense, uh, not so much if you're going <laughs> to play against them because you got to deal with it. You got to put a body on a body, but but they play, you know, they play defense like you're supposed to, and and that's the reason that they're undefeated at this point. Coach, last year you forced six turnovers. How critical is winning that part of the game? When you're playing a quality team like McNeese, you need you need some help. Uh, those guys, uh, they're they're undefeated. They know how to win. They win every single year. They're a an established team in this league. They they normally go to the playoffs every single year. They didn't last year. They they kind of hit the skids late in the season, but when you're playing a team like that, you need some breaks. And you know, last year we were able to force some of those turnovers. And a couple of times, I think last year they got a little careless with the ball, but but we had people around the ball. So we're going to need to do that in order to win this afternoon. Coach, you have already said this week in your weekly conference call with the Southland Conference that you plan to use both Parker McKenzie and Dallas Seeley in the game this week. Uh, Neither guy has necessarily separated himself from the other. Each has done some good things, and each has made some mistakes, right? Sure, and the thing is, is Parker's a solid guy. He, know, he knows our offense. He's able to deliver the mail, as we call it. Uh, he knows he can, he can match our protection versus their rush, which is we're going to have to do that. But Dallas is a little more dynamic right now. He gonna, he's going to help us move the change with his feet. And, uh, but Dallas yet is still, is still growing. He's a young quarterback, and you have to give him time. You can't just throw him out there. So bits and pieces, we're giving it to him. Or I, in, in my opinion, uh, and I've coached some good quarterbacks, we're growing him the right way. And uh, so you'll see both of them. It should be a fun day. Halloween day at Shotwell Stadium. ACU takes on McNeese State. It's a 2.30 kickoff. We'll have the pregame show for you on the ACU Sports Network at 2 p.m. We invite you, if you haven't been out to a game this year, come watch ACU take on one of the very best teams in all of FCS football, McNeese State, 
and come early. There's a lot of fun to be had at Wildcat Country, which is the tailgate area in the Northwest parking lot. Lots of free food and giveaways and some Halloween candy as well. So if you can't make it out to Shotwell, join us on the ACU Sports Network beginning with the pregame show at 2 p.m. For Sharon E. Morosky and for Coach Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Enjoy the game and we'll see you right here next week.